Welcome to Scoop World Order. Are the Buckeyes about to win it all edition? We've got a lot of uh, great insight, a lot of uh, inside tidbits that we're about to break through right now with Nevada Buck and I. Uh, I just I love where the team's at right now. I think that we've got a lot of momentum. Uh, watching that Notre Dame USC game, I mean, a lot of confidence in what we can do. Uh, so we're going to break all that down. Uh, big commitments have come in the last couple of days or last week or so. So we're going to break all that down as well. But we appreciate you guys. As always, thank you. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. Every time you guys do that is huge for our channel. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from, as always. And also let me know who are your MVPs through the midpoint of the season. We're kind of there right now. Penn State is the juggernaut that is coming into town this Saturday. We've got to be at home at noon. that has been an absolute house of horrors for these guys. So right in time for Halloween. So I think we're going to whoop them up real good. So I'm really excited about that. But uh, I'm going to get right into it with my boy, Nevada Buck. Nevada, you made a big proclamation on BuckEyeScoop.com today. Uh, what was your proclamation about the uh, entirety of the season for Ohio State football? I'm kind of with you. Again, I know a lot of people are negative and they don't see the the big the big picture but you watch that usc offensive line you watch caleb williams versus notre dame last night they got ran big time uh the o line was trash uh their transfer portal tackle who we missed on uh was trash um but what are you thinking is the prognostication going forward for ohio state football for the season because i'm feeling about as good as you are well first of all you got to remember i was the person that was that called for a 49-7 game against Purdue <laughs> when the odds when the odds makers had it at 18 points or you know had it in kind of a close game and there, there was lots of talk about all the great teams that had gone in there and lost and every Ohio State coach has lost at Purdue and Ross Light Stadium and there were people with you know things of hurricanes and oh it's gonna be so windy it's gonna be so cold we're not gonna be able to score and I just like I, I just really saw the game really really clearly and i think ohio state's going to win it all i i think ohio state is going to win the national championship let me tell you why you've got a quarterback in mccord who's really improving and really playing uh -huh. well the guys that they didn't help him out at all yesterday lots of drops um you know you didn't do anything to help him out still played through it you know the team still threw for 350 yards or whatever it was um you know four touchdowns passing the, this defense is terrific. I think 58 points through six games, um, you, know, you know, unbelievable performance. We'll keep us in every game with this, with this back seven and front fours get together. Jack and JT both had sacks. Um, special teams has been good enough. You know, their place kicking has been good enough. And I, I just, I think we're going to whip Penn State this week. Now I say that I don't, it's not going to be 49 to seven, but I think we're going to hold them down. I think it's going to be a low scoring game, but I, you know, I think we're going to, I think it's going to be, you know, 24 7 or 24 10 or something, something comfortable against penn state and i think after that you know you you, you got wisconsin and then you get you pretty much have a free ride all the way to ann arbor and i i just think we're gonna win i, I think we're a better team than everybody that we're playing i think we're improving um and i think the big thing is the offensive scheme that we went with yesterday that was unlike anything that we've seen from ryan day before that was a just that was a change that was something that was called for by the helping technician earlier this week yep. he's saying that they're going to a full rpo package right now full rpo package meaning on every play not on every play but on every play they run it you'd have a run option and a run read and a pass option and a pass read and a quarterback keep run option so actually a triple option and you saw it with mccord yesterday he scampered for nine yards and he's saying that's why they ran the Devin Brown package was to get him ready just in case when they run this, that something happened to McCord that he hasn't just been sitting on, you know, on his behind eating nachos for five games. That's why they ran that package. And it makes a lot of sense to me. And I think if the Ohio state offense stays with this diversification, stays with these pulling, you know, you know, offensive linemen going against the flow of the play, staying as unpredictable as they were yesterday, I think who's going to beat them. You know, who's going to beat them this year? There's no great teams in college football, and we might be that team. So that's my call. That's what I'm sticking with. Final answer, the Vata Buck on Ohio State to win the national championship. Yeah, I mean, I agree after watching Notre Dame just thrash USC. I mean, people are prognosticating Caleb Williams to be the greatest quarterback prospect 
of all time since Andrew Luck or before then, and I I didn't see it. Three picks. I mean, Marcus Freeman, uh, who's been under fire. There were people that are Notre Dame honkers calling him Marcus Faust, as in like Jerry Faust, as in the worst quarterback or the worst head coach in Notre Dame history. Um, I, I I think that that Notre Dame game will loo- loom large. I think that obviously they were about an inch away from beating us and. You know, when they play four straight night games, you know, they trip up versus Louisville. But otherwise, that's a playoff team that we beat on the road. Hostile, the most hostile environment that we'll see all year. More hostile than Camp Randall just because of how good the team is. Um, you know, Wisconsin with Luke. I mean, dude, they just lost to Iowa. Uh, they punted like 10 times. Terrible. And I think that we've got uh, a big edge on Penn State. Penn State, as you know, and you know I talk about they carry a lot of weight off of beating us in 2016 and 2008. So, I mean, we've owned them for like almost 20 years right now. So they have this in 05, 08, 16. And I'm telling you, like, we've got their number. And again, I'm telling you, I tweeted Ryan Day going ballistic on his staff, going ballistic on Tony Alford, on on McCord, on uh, on uh, Jimmy Simmons, uh, Josh Simmons. And I, I just, I love it. I think he's trying to turn up. He's not, he's not scared to get in people's faces. He's not scared to, to get it right. Cause again, you know, if you look at last year, I mean, dude, if we have a field goal kicker that can kick a 50 yarder, we win, we win the whole title. We whip uh TCU. It's nasty. It's ugly. So I'm right there with you. Cause I don't know who the great team is in college football for, you know, a couple weeks ago, I probably would have said Texas because Texas whipped Bama, but Bama's offensive line is subpar. Um, they can't block anybody. Um, and Texas got ran by Oklahoma. So, you know, this is a this is a year of parody. Again, with the transfer portal, uh, depth is an illusion, especially on the lines, on the O-line, D-line, where guys don't rotate as much. And I think that your call is immaculate just because I think that we have a real shot to get after these, uh, these teams coming forward. I think that... You know, I, I was happy that with the Purdue game, the most important thing to me is that we started extremely fast. We you know, we ran through those guys. Um, you know, that's a team that, you know, in the past, we've lost to Purdue in 04, 09, 11, um, you know, uh, the 18 year with Urban. Uh, again, the 18 year was, was a team that was undefeated. Won the Rose Bowl. Dwayne Haskins threw like 73 times in that game. Um, really good teams have lost at West Lafayette. And Ryan Day had those guys primed up, ready to go. And they 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 ran those guys out of the building. You know, and they don't want anything to do with it. And so I just think that the team is starting to, to get confidence. Um, our defensive ends are getting pressure. Our quarterback is playing well. Our two-quarterback system with him and Devin in the red zone is fantastic. Again, I think that... Running the quarterback is going to be the key to winning the national championship this year. So, Nevada, as we keep going forward, who are some guys that need to keep stepping up? Again, we've talked about Colonel Tate, ad nauseum, fantastic. Dallin Hayden, uh, Trey coming back from injury. Who are some guys that need to step up this week versus Penn State to get us right and ready to go uh, as we keep priming towards this national championship season? Well, I mean, I think this weekend is the story is going to be about the offensive line. But, you know, for the offensive line, I'm, I'm going to take it one step further. The person who's got to have, have a good game is Ryan Day. Ryan Day needs to have a good game because I maintain it's the scheme, not the players. And when you change the scheme, you know, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people are excited about Dallin Hayden this week, and, and that was great, and Dallin's a great story. But th- those holes were so big. Anybody was running through that. It didn't really matter. He doesn't mess around. Dallin reminds me of a, an old teammate of yours, Antonio Pittman. Uh, maybe doesn't have the top end speed of Antonio, but I, I like the way he just, just kind of gets in, gets into the hole, see hole, through hole, go through it. And uh, you know, Pittman used to do that a lot, and, and that's why he was one of my favorites. And so I say the same thing, Dallin. Dallin gets as much as is blocked up. He's you know he's not a burner. He's not going to blow past guys and break some big lane, but he, he gets the yards that are blocked up, and I think that's really good. But um, I think Ryan Day's got to discontinue his evolution as a play caller. He's got to put the guys in good spots. He's got to keep us out of loser plays. And we've yep. run it over and over. If you're a regular on this show, you know what a loser play is. We show them to you. We count the guys. We show. Them. Nobody else talks about this stuff. 
because uh-huh. Ryan Day said the only the game before he only made one bad play call, and um, you know we we have a different opinion. And uh, but I'll tell you what, against Purdue he didn't have a lot. You know there was a, there was a few, but he didn't have a lot. And when we go against the action, when we show action one, when we show orbit one way and then run back this way, or when we show power up the middle and then go outside. Man, we're just deadly effective in it because it's just messing with you know. I, I know Purdue's not a great defensive team, but you know they play defense. They they've had they've beaten some teams this year and they played in some good games and we just gave them no chance. And so my my star for this, going forward, it's got to be Ryan Day. Ryan Day needs to continue his evolution and we'll be just fine. Well, and plus Ryan Walters is a guy that at Illinois last year he had Michigan beat on the road, DC. I mean, I, I think that that Michigan game when Illinois. I uh, got hosed and they should have beat Michigan in Ann Arbor. Um, and they, they ended up kicking a long field goal with Jake Moody. I think that's the game that got him the Purdue. That's the, that got him the Purdue job. Literally. He was so good in that game. Uh, Weatherspoon, their corner, who is a first round pick, went to the Seahawks is uh, a guy that could be a pro bowler as a rookie. He's that good. Um, so I, I think that, you know, they had a good scheme, but Ryan was a step ahead the whole way. Um, I'm going to break it right into the film room because again, you know, it all comes down to, like, if we really want to be real, it, it's Kyle McCord. Uh, Kyle being the dude who we know that he is, the guy that he's developing into. Um, hang on, this should click on right here. All right. So Kyle finds Cade. Again, this is the best throw of the day. This might be the best throw of Kyle's career. Um, you know, Cade just runs a little hook right here, finds a soft zone. When he threw this, I was screaming, don't throw this. We're an empty protection, five-man protection. And, I mean, Kyle, this this is a confidence throw. This is a throw where when you know a guy is really good at what he's doing and he's confident in his receivers like he is in Cade, you know. I mean, so you got guy here, guy here, guy here, all diving Kyle. And Kyle is ripping this thing, and he says, you know what? He says, basically, my fastball is better than anything you can hit. And he, I mean, this is this is a Pedro Martinez 1997 Red Sox fastball right here. And again, you know, when it's, it's 13, 13 rip, you know, 13 rip is like one thing, but 20 rip is a totally different thing. Nevada, when he hit this throw, I, I thought it was a different level, a level jump for the offense, a level jump for the whole team, because like. That is major confidence. I mean, frankly, it's major balls to throw that and in, into basically not triple coverage, probably two and a half times coverage. Uh, but your thoughts when you saw him rip that? Well, I was watching the inside linebacker, and I thought that inside linebacker was diving on it and was going to intercept it. And, <laughs> and uh, wasn't sure where it was going to end up, but it was going to be bad because he was going with a full head of steam the other direction. So uh, I was really uh, – really you know it's so impressed by Cade who caught that with his hands made a great a great play on that like you said it's a great throw by McCord it's a confident throw and that's the kind of throws that we're going to need to win the national championship that's the kind of throws we're going to need to win up in Ann Arbor and you get to see McCord's a different quarterback he, he's a different kid than he was that first day when we trot him out against Indiana and you know I think that's what people have to remember when they see him play against Indiana they play, see him play against Youngstown State yeah, I know he's been around for a long time, but those are like his second start, maybe the second kind of, re- or maybe his first real start. Now he's on game five or six. You know, he's becoming kind of a grizzled veteran. He's seeing more. The game's starting to slow down for him. And, um, you know, his you know his arc as a quarterback is straight up right now. And he's, he's playing well, putting the, you know, he's putting the ball in good spots. I mean, earlier in his career, one of the, I mean, in his career of five, six games, you know, there was issues about putting the ball in spots where they, the ball could be intercepted, and we all were kind of holding our breath. We didn't see that as much on Saturday. That's another positive step. And so, hey, I, you know, I'm all on the cord, um, but I'm also resting easy with the fact that, heaven forbid, if something happened to him, that you've got Devin Brown who can run the offense and, 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 and do it at a high level. We haven't always had that luxury. We haven't always been in that situation. We, we, have, we had years, and we've talked about this before under, in the Justin Fields era, where if he when he got hurt against Michigan, they brought in Chug, and you know that's um, you know scary. you know Devin Brown's no Chug. That's yeah, that was scary. It's going through an entire year knowing that if your quarterback goes down, that the year's over. 
is a terrifying prospect. You know, consider what we went through in 2014, where we went from Braxton to JT to Cardell. You know, this year, if we went from, you know, uh, you know from Accord to Brown, I mean, it's, it's not the same level, but at least it's not game over. And um, yeah. that's, that's good news. And, and certainly it, it gives the luxury to Ryan to know that he can run the quarterback a little bit because if, if the unthinkable happened, the season is not over. Well, yeah, that's my thing. And what, the game breaker in our whole offense is if we do decide to run the quarterback a little bit when we need it versus Penn State versus Michigan versus you know Wisconsin on the road, if heaven forbid we need that. I, I think running him a little bit doesn't hurt. You know, uh, again, I'm a big proponent of run the read option, slide, take the four, five, six, seven, eight yards that you get, and don't don't absorb the big hit from the linebacker or from the safety or the guys that could potentially hurt you, you know, hurt your shoulder, whatever. Um, but uh, another play, this is a beautiful play. I love this design. Again, Ryan was deep in his bag right here. I know people don't realize that because if you don't watch our show, you don't really know what's going on. He puts Kate on a drag right here. It's nice, easy money. You know, Marvin knows he's not the guy uh, this play. So Cade's a primary. This is a good seven-man protection. So I'm going to put seven-man right here. You've got Annette. You've got edge blocker here. You've got uh, G. Scott. He does a great job here blocking. And I and I, I think G has been a guy who's been a pleasant surprise. We've been critical of G in the past. But he puts his nose in here, gets a nice little block. Um Again, to seal it all up, you know, again, the, the action I love right here is anytime you pull a guard, you get some 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 absorption from the, the safeties because these guys are all watching the guard. So when the guard pulls, they're thinking run, um, especially as we haven't done that that much. So when you see, you know, Donnie pull over here and kind of seal the edge up, um, you know, you got that down, that down block action. This end is just kind of chilling right here. But then you have, you know, you've got G and you've got Dallin as your your backup soldiers that are there. You've got Cade running this little this little route right here, this little drag. Easy money. Again, I, I like it because you know you've got all these people that are occupied by the by the line. Zero pressure on um on Kyle. And again, you see this nice easy action right here. Marvin, terrifying, terrifying. And again, you know, when he's running a drag, it's hard to cover it when you've got everybody kind of absorbed up in the box and you throw it to him, easy TD. This is fantastic play design by Ohio State, by Ryan Day. Um, and, and again, like, I, I just like when you've got these three backup soldiers behind your your uh, your 4-0 lineman, you know, Donnie's here ready to take on the D end. And it's just, you know, it's just so flawless. Um, but your thoughts on this, again, We've been very critical of G. Scott in the past. I think he's a guy who has very good ability, um, but his willingness to block has been huge because when people see him come into the game, if they've scouted him at all, they say, okay, he's a former receiver. He's not a blocking guy. We use him a lot as a blocking guy, but I think that was a really good uh, uh, development of protection by Ryan. But your thoughts on that play? Well, like you said, you know, I, I was glad you were able to highlight the, the pulling of Donnie. The pulling of Donnie not only froze the safeties, it froze the linebackers. That's why they were over there. That's why when Kate came across their face, they were still staring in the backfield because we hadn't shown that before. And it's just little things like that where you show, you know, you, you, you pull a tackle from left to right. And so, so what message does that send to the defense? It sends the defense, this play is going left to right. And then what do you do? You throw back to the left. That's going against the action of the play pops wide open touchdown and you know the more that we can do that the more that we can be less you know unpredictable the more that we can kind of create kind of doubt in the minds of the defense cut so they can't just tee off and flow to the spot man um that makes the offense look a lot better as for as for g scott um i i just i don't think he does much and i i, I it's i don't think he's a great blocker i think he's okay I, I, i'm sure he's willing he's not a great receiver and boy, he gets a lot of burn. I mean, they put him out there, you know, 20, 30, 35, 40 slaps a game. Um, I'm not sure what they're getting out of it. But again, I, I'm not in the business of, you know, banning, banging on kids. You know, he's, he's, he's going out there. He's trying. He's doing the best. For my money, I'd have a Carnell Tate out there. I'd have a Brandon Ennis out there. I'd have another big play guy out there and just put the pressure on that defense every time 
um, that, that, you know, when, you, when you're looking at Marvin and Ameka and Carnell and Brandon Innes and Julian, and, you know, I would just keep the pressure on that one. But that's just my humble opinion. Um, they wanted a seven-man protection. It worked for, for an easy touchdown. So great job, Ryan. Great job, OSG offense. All right, so we're going to go to when it is a little bit out of reach. Um, I don't know if Purdue is subbed here at this point. Um, again, it's it's 34-7. There's seven minutes to go left in the game. But with that being said, we have the South Florida Express kids are in the building. We've got uh, our boy BI11, Brandon Ennis, uh, Brandon Badman. Ennis hits them with the deal. We've got Carnell. We've got the crew out here. So, you know, Brandon Ennis in the slot is going to be a massive, massive disadvantage uh, for anybody that sees him next year. Because I think next year, you know, if you put a gun to my head, I'm going to say, you know, if, if Ibaka and Marvin go pro, I'm starting uh, J.J. Smith at X, true freshman X. I'm putting uh, Carnell at the Z. I'm putting, you know, yeah, you have to put him at the H. He's too talented. He's too nasty. And again, you put a slot, a helpless slot versus Brandon Ennis, Go light a candle from a church, people, because I'm telling you, he's nasty. So he has this move. You know, again, you know, th this isn't much of a move, but he goes here. He just runs right past him. Devin Brown puts this thing right on the money. Game over. And, and again, the thing about Brandon is, like, when that ball is up in the air, nobody is going to beat him for the ball. Nobody. Because that's the kind of guy he is. He's a monster. You throw him the ball, even if it's a bad, a bad throw, a contested catch, he's coming down with it. So Brandon gets it, makes a move to the crib. And, and, and you know what's funny is Nevada, I'm I'm right there with you. So so BI gets his first deal of, of his Ohio State career. As we go forward, again, not trying to hurt feelings, but we saw what Carnell Tate did. We saw what Brandon Innes did. You know, I mean, when you when you're competing with with snaps between Julian Fleming, G Scott. And if you've got guys like Brandon Ennis, Carnell Tate, how do you decipher who gets the snaps going forward? Because for me, I'm 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 feeding Secretariat, I'm feeding the you know the man of war, the 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 baddest horses in the game, like Brandon Ennis, like Carnell Tate. I like Julian Fleming, he's a nice player, very good teammate, you know, works hard, blocks and all that. But Brandon Ennis and Carnell Tate bring this bring a different dimension to the entire offense. A fear factor dimension to the offense. What are your thoughts with working those guys in more than guys like Julian Fleming, G. Scott, who are guys that are older, uh, more you know, they're they're maybe better thought of, I guess, but they're not. They don't have that that ceiling that that Brandon and Colonel have. Well, I, I'm just let me just summarize my thoughts really simply. Uh, I'm anti dragging more people into the box i'm pro anything that gets guys out of the box and i think with with g like even on that seven man protection right there you know he was kind of motioning in saying to the box that, you know, that's bringing more traffic inside i know we're on a max protect i know you you're that old lineman and you likes you like to have four guys and three guys behind and then two guys behind him and one guy behind him just in case anybody breaks through but uh you know i i, I you know i'm more Let's spread them out. Let's run the power spread. Let's run you know, four wide and a single offset back or, or whatever. And, and, and uh, let's let our athleticism shine through because I want to see teams. I want to see teams defend us when we have Marvin, Ameka, Brandon, and, and Carnell Tate out there. So I just want to see them match up. Somebody, somebody's going to be in a favorable matchup in that situation. Somebody's going to get a linebacker or somebody's going to get a safety or somebody's going to get something. And, um, you know, you, we can do that. We, we can do that and still have Kyle McCord and Trey Henderson as the offset back. And I'm just not sure how you defend that. I just think that would give most offensive coordinators nightmares. And, um, you know, if you run any type of RPO action with a group like that, man, you make one mistake and it's 88 out the gate. So, um, but again, great job on that play. Great job in that seven man protection and great job by Kyle McCord. No, I, I totally agree. I think that when you've got four guys that are terrifying to guard between Marvin and Mecca, put those guys on the left and then put the SFE guys on the right, put Carnell, put Brandon, I mean, in four wide, and then you put Trey in the backfield with Kyle. I don't know how you defend that. I think it's absolutely terrifying. So uh, I think those guys need more snaps. I mean, frankly, I don't think that 
anybody is scared of guarding Julian Fleming or or G Scott, but I think people are really scared of guarding our uh, our young freshmen that are uh, that are monsters. And again, here's the thing: when it's this point in the season, they're not true freshmen anymore. They're guys that are ready for war, uh, ready to 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 move forward. Um, but with that being said, Nevada, give me your final thoughts on the Penn State game. It's a super early preview. Obviously, it's Sunday. We've got a lot of time, a lot of uh, a lot of more intel to gather, but. How are you feeling about the Penn State game and Ohio State going forward? Um, I think the Penn State game, I think it's going to be raucous. I think it's going to be crowded. I think the OSU uh, crowd is going to show up on Saturday morning. Um, and I think the drowler is going to melt. I think he's going to, I think the moment's going to be too big for him. I think the OSU defense is going to be too big for him. And I think the OSU offense will be opportunistic enough for us to uh, to get out of there with a, with a, a nice win over another quality opponent. Um, you know, what give us the two best wins in the country with at Notre Dame and against Penn State. And uh, let's get on to Camp Randall and take care of business there as well. So I'm feeling really confident. Want to see how the team responds this week in practice. Uh, Want to see what Ryan Day has cooked up uh, offensively, but feeling really good. Um, there's no way I'm picking against Ohio State on Saturday. I'm just early preview. Lines five and a half. I'm betting Ohio State and laying the points. And, and I think you'll be very happy. I, I totally agree. This is the last question. This is a fun question. I had a friend. She said she would not wear a costume for Halloween. Do you have a Halloween costume? Do you stop wearing Halloween costumes uh, with your kids? I am dressing up as Bowser this year. I can't wait to dress up as Bowser. Uh, but she said, I am not wearing a costume uh, ever for you or for Halloween or for anybody. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, again, we're about a couple weeks out. People still order their costumes. But do you have a costume for Halloween this year? You know, you know, I I, I think first of all, hot girls can get away without wearing a costume because <laughs> they're, just, they're just they're just hot girls, and yeah, they can kind of go with that. My favorite yeah. one—I mentioned this before—I like the uh, I like the Charlie Brown ghost. So I usually wear like the sheet with the Charlie Brown ghost on it. And <laughs> I, I usually get ro ro rocks. Rocks and candy corn into my uh, in my basket, which is really all, uh, almond is almond really joy awesome. almond joys and like mounds and like the worst game in the world. But I'm the dad that walks around with the red cup, the plastic cup. You know that dad's loaded when he's walking his kids out there and stuff like that. So, <laughs> I mean, that that's me. So if you see a Charlie Brown ghost with a red cup, that's uh, that's the matter box. There you go. I absolutely love that. Well, again, you only get the best when you're on buckeyescoop.com i appreciate nevada buck with this candor shout out in the comments i want to know what are you wearing for halloween this year that's a huge question i'm gonna be wearing my bowser costume with the big shell big old horns uh bowser's my boy so appreciate you guys as always if you enjoy this content please leave us a like click subscribe also click that little alert button uh again we appreciate all of your uh candor and your greatness in the comments so i need to know who needs to step up for Penn State on offense and defense and what are you doing for the game? Shout out where you guys are watching from. And as always, thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. And thank you, Scoop family. You guys are the absolute best. We're cooking. We're about to win the Natty this year. So you better get real excited about it. So I appreciate you guys, as always. Join BuckeyeScoop.com if you want to be a part of the revolution and the greatest Ohio State message board in existence. Go Bucks.